at this time we call the meeting to order and I ask that, that everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. 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 Yeah. At this time, I ask for a motion to elect uh, officers for the Board of Education. I would uh, nominate uh, Mrs. O'Brien to be the president of the board. There's no objections. Okay. Second. Aye. Take her in. Um, is there a nomination for vice president, please? I, I nominate Judith Fischer.
<laughs> she called her a sign. <laughs> tricky, tricky patty. <laughs> Judy's got the other one, right? I mean, when you were talking to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went right after Brian. It wasn't on here. That's the why I was like, oh, there it is. For Judy to act. Uh, you vote on it. That's a, that's a motion? You do a motion. Okay. A motion for the Vice President, Mrs. Fouché, to act in legal matters in the absence of the President. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? And we have appointment of officers. District, I'll, I'll name each one and then we do one vote, correct? correct. District Treasurer, Erica Frank, Clerk of the Board, Patricia DiGregorio, Claims Auditor, Serene and Associates, and then the author of the and Board of Registrars, Gen, Registrars, Jennifer Brewer and Patricia DiGregorio. Motion to approve the appointment? So moved. Second. Okay. Exactly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Oath of office. Oath of office, yeah. Does that <laughs> okay. Our other appointments, I'll go through them all and then if anybody wants to have a conversation about any of them. Um, school physicians, Peconic Bay Primary Medical, School Attorney Ingerman Smith, Bond Attorney Hawkins Delafield and Wood, Fiscal Advisor Munstead Services, Independent Auditors Colin and Danowski. Um, extra one we're gonna do them all together, Patty, in one vote? Maybe I should extra, I I'll go through them quickly. Extra classroom activity funds, grades K through six, um, Chief Faculty Advisors, Ellen Waldron O'Neill, grades seven through 12, Chief Faculty Advisors, Terrence Rush, grades K through 12, Central Treasurers, Karen Kowalski. Junior, senior high activities, band fund, music fund, National Honor Society, SAD, high school student council, junior high yearbook, DECA, class of 2021, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Chorus Fund, Drama Fund, Interact Club, Snuff Box, High School Yearbook, The Sentinel, Junior High Student Council, and First Club, and the General Fund. And the elementary activities are Drama, Student Council, and Student Council. On Class of 2026, that should have been over there. You have a question at that? We'll they stop there for your question. Then. Yeah. Um, the Ambassador Club, are they a separate club or no? Student Ambassador. There's no money with that. Is it just there, 
Okay, there's no money with that. And I'm, I'm trying to think of if there was something. I think these are only ones that there's. That we have extra class accounts for. Fundraising and money back and forth. Right, these are all of them then? Okay. I didn't know, I didn't know if that one did. Um, and what about Virtual Enterprise? Do they have a class account or not? This virtual, I think these are all of them. Right. I mean, I know. Yeah, I, 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 I know VE does fundraising, so I don't know if they've established it under that or if it's under the, the curriculum. So just something to look into. I was just curious. Okay. Sure. okay. The hearing officers are from the SED list of authorized hearing officers. Committee on Special Education includes Dr. Simonetti, um, the director of PPS, and CSE. She's a PC SE chairperson, including David Barrett, Jennifer Molly, a general general education teacher, and a special education teacher, along with optional members Francesca Reardon, Joe Crimmy, Patricia O'Day, Corey Pearsell, Patricia Avado, Ellen Waldron O'Neill, Terrence Rush, Jessica Santiago, and the school physician. The committee on Preschool and Special Education is the same, but includes parent members from Committee on Special Education. There's not one apparent member on the regular committee for special education. Typically, only if uh, typically only if the parent who's uh, CSE it is asks for. It. Okay. Okay. Thank you. A representative from the Department of Health Handicapped Children program, a professional from an approved preschool who participated in the preschool evaluation, a general education teacher of the student, and Jessica Santiago. This also includes the readoption of the Nassau and Suffolk County list of approved preschool programs for three and four year olds. Records access officers Patricia DiGregorio, Royals Appeals Officers Dr. Anthony Morrow, Records Management Officers Patricia DiGregorio, Asbestos Designates Anthony Dragone, 504 Accommodation Compliance Officers Dr. Simonetti, Title IX Officers Dr. Morrow. Sexual Harassment Officers, Dr. Morrow, Purchasing Agent, Dr. Uh, Charles Scheid. Um, let's vote on those and then we'll talk to the committees. How's that? Is there a motion to accept those appointments? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, these are the committees. Policy, Finance, Building, and Negotiation Team Rep. Policy. Go. I'll stay. I don't mind being on it if somebody else wants to. There's, but I know you're going to ask me to do fine. fine right. So I'll, I'll serve it with Scott if, if there's no objection, because Brian wants to take a shot at building. So, so Scott. And well, I don't know. I'm asking these guys. It's hard to like. You all right with that? Yeah. Like, if I'm on that with Scott. Anybody else want to do it? All right. So it'll be Scott. You're the chairperson, Scott. Right. Okay. I'll serve as your little member. Uh, finance committee. I'll do it. Roll with you. Mm -hmm. And Brian, as you pointed out in your text, if, if you can't make it, then you just tag me and I'll send it for you. So, yeah, and a lot of finance, I mean, we've been able to, you know, I think do things via getting, getting the information and email and stuff like that. So, so that'll be Judy and Brian tagging. Building committee. Don, you still want to do it? You want to be the chairperson? Q and Brian. Brian expressed an interest. Brian's going to be on that? Yes. Yeah. Chair. Okay. John and Brian. Um, negotiation team rep. I'll stay. I'll stay. Okay. You going to arm wrestle for chair? John's smarter than I am. You want to be so, co-chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. You can be co-chairs. Fine, we're co-chairs. There we go. Everybody gets a prize. Okay, is there a motion to accept the board committee's policy committee, Scott and Paulette, finance committee, Judy and Brian, building committee, John and Brian, and negotiation team rep, Scott and John. And are there any other committees? Dr. Moore, do you know of any other committees that you're used to or you would like to see happen? <coughs> well, the other one uh, would be that. The district wide safety committee, which is in here later. Right, that's Scott. Yes, yeah. I'll get on if they need another body. Okay. All right, so this 
for these things? If anything arises during the year and you think that they're, especially in light of the new world, and you think that there needs to be additional committees, we can always Absolutely. do it at that time. I mean, at one point we had like curriculum and stuff like that. We so, did. You know, we have you know, a curriculum. There was something like that. I would assume the play committee too. You know, there was a curriculum. I can't remember. Couldn't have been that. Okay, is there a motion to approve these committee? So moved. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, here we come to the banks. Our official bank depositories. BNB, should we say slash dime, Bank of America, Capital One Bank, People's Bank, m &T Savings Bank, Wachovia Bank. Is BNB our primary now? Right. It's still Capital One. Does that work? Since they're all the way in Mattatuck. Okay. We use BNB for the school lunch, so it's right here. And everything, most of the other ones are going to be Okay. At one point, we had talked and discussed as a board that. Um, BNB was more of a hometown bank, but that was before this week's which was done, so maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have the authorization of cooperative investment program liquid asset security systems, otherwise known as CLAS. You guys want to do the meetings the same the fourth Wednesday of the month and the work sessions the second Wednesday quarterly. Does that work? Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. The official newspapers, the Suffolk Times, and the News Review. Is there a motion to accept those designations? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, some further authorizations. Chief School Officer to certify payrolls. Chief School Officer to approve budget transfers consistent with fiscal policy. Application for federal and state funds, the Chief School Officer. District Treasurer to establish a $100 petty cash fund. Didn't we increase that? I thought we increased that to like two hundred. Yeah. Is 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 a hundred dollars a reason? Well, many districts don't really even have that. We don't even have that. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't think that was. We we do we need a petty cash fund. Something else, but it wasn't petty cash. Okay. Do we even need it? But do we need it? Yeah. Keep it just add it, but we don't really. I would keep it. Okay. So then we'll keep it. Something else that we increased that we talked about, but it wasn't very much. Authorization for single signature on checks, either Erica Pine or Charles Schleit under $10,000, and superintendent signature as a second on all non payroll checks over $10,000. In the absence of the superintendent, the assistant, assistant superintendent for business to sign. What about checks for $10,000? Mm. a great question. Under and up to. That's yeah, it's ten and over. So it's ten and over. Okay. okay. So we should change that. So thank you, Scott. Cool. And that uh, that's the one I think that we changed the policy last year. That's the one that we had increased, correct? Um, and obviously if it's a over ten thousand, it's going to still be dual signature. In other words, if it, it would be Doctor Morrow can't sign it. It would be Erica and you Erica. will you and you, for both of you will. Chief School Officer to authorize conferences, conventions, workshops, attendance. Authorization for Assistant Superintendent for Business to make investments of school funds. Authorization for Monistat Services, Inc. to act for the district as a dissemination agent for annual SEC filing. Authorization for the Board President to appoint impartial hearing officers on behalf of the Board to meet time requirement. Authorization for the following people to be signatories on the extracurricular accounts, Karen Kowalski, Charles Shai, Terrence Rush, Rush, and Ellen O'Neill. Is there a motion for all of those authorizations? So moved. Second. Second. Question. Does that mean that Question. they, I'm sorry, on the uh, authorization for the extracurricular, does that mean that they can sign checks? If they, if, in other words, you're saying signatories for those. So in other words, if a club needs a check cut and uh, Ms. Kowalski is not here, they can go to these people? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bonding of personnel. Resolved that the district maintains a blanket bond with a million dollar per loss limit for employee dishonest 
for employee dishonesty for all district employees and designated agents as written by the New York Schools Insurance Reciprocal for the period beginning July 1, 2020 and ending June 30, 2021. Be and hereby is approved. Is there a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, the, so, and then we have a bunch of other items. Readoption of all policies, authorizations, and codes of ethics in effect during the previous year. Appointment of superintendent to make residency determination. Follow IRS standard mileage rate for business. Establish the tuition rate for new Suffolk students that shall increase at the annual Southwold school tax levy increase. Establish a meal allowance of a maximum of $45 per day for reimbursement. Receipts acceptable to the assistant superintendent of business must be attached to the expense voucher for reimbursement. Establish substitute teacher rate for certified teachers at $125 a day and non-certified teachers at $100 a day. Nurse, sub nurse substitute rate, $140 a day. Establish other substitute rates for teacher assistants, teacher aide, clerk typists, and custodians at 25 cents less the starting hourly rate in the current CSEA contract. Is, oh. Establish an out-of-district pro proctoring rate at $125 a day. Establish rate for translation for the CSEs and parent-teacher conferences, $210 a full day, $105 a half a day. And a rate for election workers in line with minimum wage for 2021 at $14 an hour. Question. Yes, I have one as well. On the uh, translation, what do we consider a full day and what do we consider a half day? Sorry? On the translation rate, what do we consider a full day what do we consider a half day? I mean, is it is it based on the school? And it's not not an eight-hour day. Is it based on the school day from seven to seven thirty to two thirty? So it's a six-hour day or seven-hour day. Or seven hours for the school day. So at three and a half hours, it's one hundred five, and it's okay. We also use translation a lot throughout the year um, for registration purposes. Yeah, is there an hourly rate yeah. for it that we have? Do we know? We see it on our agenda throughout the year. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. So this wouldn't be a district employee could wouldn't be appropriate for this because they're already a district employee. That's a Does a district employee who their job is not translation, if they, they do translation, do they get remunerated for that? Do they get paid for doing something outside, you know? Outside their job title. Right. Okay. So this is strictly for CSEs and parent-teacher conferences. It just might be something now with the um, Spanish-speaking enrollment so much higher, we may want to look to do this a different way. Right. That's something that we should probably talk about this year. Maybe we can, yeah, look into that a little bit. This also might be like the petty cash fund. We have it, just if we use it once a year, that's a lot. Right. Although this, I think the opposite happens. I think we probably use this a lot as an hourly throughout the year, not the CSEAs necessarily, too. Right. And it may not, and we may be using somebody in-house, but somebody in-house and we're pulling them from their regular job to do it, it you know maybe that's not the best way to do it if that's what I mean that, you know what I mean that's all just look at the translation we should see how we use anyone I think I think that is, this is a rate that we use we use outside people's right 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 and I know you're right on during the year we'll see um under employees action for that kind of stuff but well, I'll gather information. This is strictly, for what we're acting on is strictly, according to this, for CSEs. CSEs and parent-teacher conferences, right. these dollars. Right, apps. that we're okay. aware. Yeah. Okay. Now, we were just talking about maybe we should look at the way what we're doing internally through the West of right. as well. We do this more than this. Like, we contract with the most who service for translators. Okay. Like, we have manual. There are no manual. Right, right. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, you, you go to BOCES and they have a translator service. That. You would never see it because it goes to our post office. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Um, I'll, I'll gather information about translators, how we use them, what they do. Right. So, and have a future discussion about it. Also, um, 
with the uh, the substitute teachers. I believe it was always the schools or some administrators' philosophy that we use certified teachers first. Are we still um, adhering to that? And again, maybe that's just a conversation for a future yeah, day. That, that. I think the lift, I, you know, I know this is something we had started to bring up last year, and then uh, we all had, you know, the thing that just stormed all of us this year. Um, but I think a conversation about when we, you know, if we have our substitute teacher groups, we should really have a group of, you know, which they should be separate. These are our certified group. This is our non-certified, and we should always go through the certified group first before we move to non-certified. I'm not sure that that's how we arranged it. So, and I know we started those discussions last year, year, and then COVID happened. So I can look and see how we're set in ASAP. Yeah. You can set that in, you can set that in ASAP. Right. But it goes to certified first. Um, right. And then find out, you know, how we Yeah, and, and that would be great. Yeah, and also some of the, you know, the process of how, you know, request them and stuff. I know that has changed. We used to have people who actually picked up the phone and called, and I know now that we have this new system, and I'm not sure the board understands the process, so maybe we could get educated on the process. I think we're a combination of the two. I think, right. I think the elementary still does call. So I'll find out. I'll get the yeah. information for those. Yeah, if we could get the, kind of the, what the, the workflow is so we understand it. That's great. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve all of those other items, 12.1, 12, and 12.3? 12 so Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This time our regular business meeting will begin. <laughs> um, our consent agenda is our approval of minutes from our regular board meeting of June 24th. <coughs> our financial matters, which is our schedule of our bills, our treasurer's report, which we're not doing in our monthly budget status report because we will do those at our August meeting like we do every year because it's year end, the end of June. And transfers. Along with that, there's contracted services. I'll just go through them because I know these are for the year. Achievement Therapies LLC, Dr. Eisenberg, neuropsychologist, LIDC services, Mentor Therapy LLC, MKSA, Integra. Omni 403B, the Summit School in St. James Tutoring. It also looking at the No, I'm looking at the agenda that was emailed to us because the only addendum was personnel that I got. But sorry. I no, I asked you, I said no. was everything the same. I'm sorry, I didn't hear I always go by mine because I have notes. Right. Well, we Helping Hands, PLLC, and Peconic Bay. We already did those in. But this is just a contract. Oh, contract. Oh, okay. 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 Is there anything else that's different in that? Um, no, it just the right on that one. Yeah. Okay. And the CSE recommendations, which there are none. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. And seconds. All in favor? Aye. All business. Superintendent's report. Welcome, Dr. Morrow. Thank you. So I, I have a little bit under the old business. Uh, I had been asked about um, registration of students, um, you know, due to the COVID outbreak and the pandemic. So we have, at this point in time, we have seven pending registrations that have notified us that they're relocating uh, due to the pandemic. Two in kindergarten, one in third, two in fourth, and two in fifth. Um, you know. With all of those, that puts us as 34, with, uh, at 34 kindergartners. Um, I'm sorry, 34 plus the three that are pending would be 37. Um, none of those would cause us to break a section. Um, and all of them are pending. They've come in and started the registration process. None of them have finished it. So um, we have probably about a dozen or 14 pending right now for multiple different reasons. Some are just your typical. We have a handful of kids in the hand, a full of kids out like we do every year. So students that moved from Mattatuck just because they moved from Mattatuck, or students that moved from New Jersey at Township, New Jersey, we had two, uh, two kids come. You know, those aren't on this list because they just moved because they moved. Um, right, gotcha. Yeah, the other, the seven that told us that they were moving out this way um, and relocating uh, because of the pandemic are the ones that I put up the list. All of them are pending. If they did all come, it wouldn't really affect our class sections at all. That's an interesting number. It's low compared to some of the other districts. 
What was the total number? Well, seven. seven. Seven due to the pandemic, plus how many others? You said about another uh, There's ten. probably another seven that are pending, and some of those 14 will never finish registration here and never come here. And I know we do have some kids who are normally like moving to yeah, other districts right, right, yeah. nearby and stuff like that. I know we what that's clear today that we're not Right. We have kids that come in and come. I mean, it's the flow of school. And but we, don't, we, we haven't seen anything significant. No. No, nothing. Okay. Um, if, the, if, yeah, if you start to see that between meetings, you know, it would be nice if we... We'll let you know. That. Yeah. I'm sure that I'll put it in that weekly uh, update. What are you hearing out there regarding first of August and the governor's decision, do you think that could sway these numbers? Depending you know, on whether school uh, opens? I think the spirited debate between the governor and the, and the uh, mayor could absolutely sway these numbers. You know, the mayor says they're opening school. The governor says you don't have the right to say that. Um, you know, so the governor speaks for all of us. So if he says we're not opening school, then we're not opening school. It's not going to be we're not opening New York City, we're not opening Nassau. One mile from each other in some cases. Right. But I mean, what if, I mean, I don't think it will. if he decides to do it regionally, we could see a difference. Yes. And that's the concern. You know, if he says, okay, these regions, because they've reached this phase, yeah. open, and you know, that'll be interesting. Yeah. And, and I mean, time will tell. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if regionally we'd be terribly different than uh, Westchester and Manhattan and Nassau. You know, we're similar. We're probably one phase ahead of Manhattan. But even that. Well, it's interesting. Minus I think if you, if you, if you split Suffolk County in two, I think, yeah. you know, I think Eastern Suffolk County would probably be where upstate is right now, yeah. and Western Suffolk County is not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Yes, it's going to be interesting. And the truth is, um, we could absolutely end up opening in the city, not. Um, there's no telltale sign right now. Well, I also think that the, the, the plans, too, you know, that they want to have, whether or not you can actually, you know, come up with the plans that they want. Yes. Well, uh, you know, and some of that I have in, in my, my, okay. uh, my update, you know, the report. So thanks to everyone uh, for the warm welcome to South Hole. The first week has really been great. Uh, this would be, you know, since we were off on Friday, my fifth day. Um, and I've had the opportunity to sit and meet with a lot of, um, you know, in-district 12-month employees and key people. I've had an opportunity to meet a handful of others that have been around and in. Um, and everybody has been really warm and, and welcoming and, and I'm settling in nice. I spent the day with David yesterday. Um, he and I are going to spend most of the day together tomorrow and then we're going to go uh, out and visit with Marlon in, in Greenport and since we love some shared um, people and since we're both new, it kind of behooves everybody for us to speak together at once. It happens to be that I know Marlon. We sat on the Suffolk County Curriculum Council together. So I've known him for a handful of years. He's really a nice gentleman. Um, you know, so I look forward to seeing him tomorrow. Um, Governor Cuomo recently announced that, that he's going to make a decision in reopening schools during the first week of August, which will give us about three and a half to four weeks, um, you know, to, to move forward after that. Final guidance from the state pertaining to the reopening guidelines uh, is supposed to be available on July 13th. And school reopening plans will be due uh, by July 31st. He pushed it back two weeks. Uh, good in some ways, bad in some ways. You know, um, so that's where we're at with that. I set up a meeting for next week with the the the, um, the council that I meet with regularly um, to discuss a number of things. But you know, one of them would be uh, reopening and, and how we're going to move forward with that. You know, I know a lot of people are planning and coming up with great ideas, but I want to make sure that, um, you know, it's great to have all these ideas, but before we put things out to people, we need to all be on the same page. We need to make sure that we, uh, you know, that we are following the guidelines that are going to be in place when we start school. Um, you know, so we're going to have that meeting, and then we're going to schedule a meeting for uh, right after the 13th to meet with the entire uh, group of 28, including uh, Chief Cameron and everybody else, so that we can talk about our plans to go forward there probably a few days after so we can get um, indication of what they mean because when plans come out from the state they don't you know when they're announced it's typically not exactly what's in the exact order so it behooves to wait a couple of days until you get a true interpretation of the exact order before you start planning so you know that's how we're going to move forward with that um, you know in an effort to connect with the community uh, and answer any questions students or parents may have uh, I reached out to the Soho TV people today. Uh, Jennifer helped me with that. 
and I'm going to ask some of the students from Soho TV to conduct an interview rather than me just creating a video. Um, I think it's a much nicer way to get those uh, questions answered. I'm going to ask them to use certain questions to target certain areas that I would have done in the video, and then I'm going to let them come up with some of their own questions for whatever they would like to ask. You know, if I um, yeah, so um, I'm hoping to do that next week. We do have some of the Soho TV people coming in uh, to do some things. You, you saw it on the agenda today. Um, you know, so so I plan on doing that. At, during that um, interview, I'll put out the times where I'll be doing either a uh, Google Meet or a Zoom session, two, two to three. Uh, I was thinking of doing 2 a.m., 2 p.m., but now I'm probably going to do 1 a.m., 1 middle of the day, and 1 p.m. This way, anybody works any shift that wants to be available can be available for it and i'll also put out the date that we can do something live outside i would like to do something down at the elementary amphitheater maybe you know three or four weeks from now a little bit later in the summer where they can see a live person if they like to and i can see them um, so we're moving forward with, with those um, i think suggestion you zoom and not <laughs> uh, i have a much tougher time with google meet than zoom yeah i would i would suggest yeah. that only because I think that, talk about lay people who are not businesses, and that families have figured out how to use that to stay connected. So people might be more inclined. That's just my opinion. People yep. can weigh in and say, I think it's a good Is there still like a security issue with Zoom? Uh, it's 2D compliant now, Zoom is. It wasn't at the beginning. Okay. Um, it is now state compliant, which means we could actually use it with students. But adult to adult, Zoom is completely compliant with the state. And I, and I think these are meetings. It's not like, yeah. you know, they were meetings that you would be holding here publicly anyway. So uh, Again, not that yeah. we have any national secrets here. but yeah. right. So for that, for, for that, I think yeah, it's the okay. Concern, the concern with Zoom was, was less about secrets getting out, more about people being able to get in. You know, right. Got into a number of college classes and appropriate and, and posted appropriate material. And they right. said Stuff like that. Things. Um, you know, they Zoom has tightened it up and they've put it through posts and it is now 2D compliant in New York State. So it's... What that exactly means they did, I don't know, but I know that now the state says okay. you can use it in schools, so they must have changed it in a way that makes them feel that it's safe enough. Yeah. And I, like I said, I just think for the yeah. Yeah. common public out there, they, they may have a better chance. And they have a better chance of getting people to... Uh, you know, people are used to Zoom than they are. At this point. Meetings. None of us were used to it three months ago, but, you know. It's so. stock to have. So, that's it. Thank you. Um, I have two quick questions for you. I think it would fall under this your superintendent's report. Um, has anybody from the PTA reached out to you? Are there new PTA boards or anything? Else? They have. Okay. I just wanted yeah. to ask. And I do know um, you will be, uh, uh, the President of South School Educational Foundation will be reaching out to uh, Jennifer to schedule an appointment with you. We spoke about that today. Okay. And um, I know you don't know who that is. Yes. So I'll ask Jennifer. Also, I know you've only been here a minute and a half. Have you had the opportunity, has um, Anthony or anyone taken you on a tour of the facilities and the grounds and kind of gotten a look at the nooks and the crannies? And I, I've gotten, um, Steve gave me one tour. Uh, Ellen gave me a tour of the elementary building. You know, uh, Terrence gave me a tour of the secondary building. I don't know what days. Okay. I'm assuming my tour with him will be of everything. Like the boilers and the boiler room. Right. Uh, get all yeah. the stuff that, uh, and any issues pointed out. Yeah. Um, but we did the fields, and I saw the field with floods all the time. And I went down and kind of dug it up and <laughs> all, you know, some of those things. And so I've had numerous different, each person kind of gives me a tour that's okay. germane to their particular area. Okay, good. Which is great, you know, um, because then I, by the end I will have gotten to see, you know, uh, the important pieces that everybody, that are important to everybody. Great. Um, so it's Suffolk County Educational Foundation. Southwold School of Education. Southwold School of Education. Um, the PTA and the tour. Those are my two. I will reach out to Terrence and. Uh, As I said, I just I would have. I was just wondering if the PTA. I don't even know. Who you know, I'm gonna, I'll reach out to Terrence and Ellen and find out later. That that yes. they may know. Yeah. They may not have even. I don't even know if they've had their elections. In Everything kind of got yeah, halted at the time they would be doing those things. Uh, I'll, I'll reach out to the two of them and ask. Thank you so much for your report. That brings us to personnel. Of course, it's that meeting where we do have a few. So.
employees leaving the district full-time permanent. Sharon Washeen is retired, retiring effective August 1, 2020. Employees entering the district full-time permanent is Jeanette Cooper, a health aide, three-year probationary appointment, effective September 20. She's replacing Lisa Ventanasa, I believe. Right, who's replacing, right. I just meant the position of the person. Um, before we go into, what does EYS stand for on this? Okay, no, that's okay. Um, EYS bus aid, Eileen Bracken, EYS aid, Heather Gearing, Kate Panetta sub, Annabella Harvey is a sub. Technology work over the summer is Jason Wisnowski and Eric Keel for Soho TV. And then we've got Consolidated Grant Coordinator, Lisa Simonetti, Translation Services, Catherine Ryan. There's a translation question we knew was going to come up. Uh, substitute list for 2021. So Okay. Well, that's for over the summer translations. No, I, I assume that's for when we need translation. She does our documents. Our written. Okay. So that's her annual stipend. That's her pay annual. Maybe just as, I mean, it's fine, we'll approve it, but maybe look, I would think both of would provide a service for that as well. Maybe this. And if it comes under what we already paid for. Right, and we get aid back, it may be just something to look at going forward. Um, and then we have a substitute list. Do I need to read all of these now? Okay. There's a whole bunch of people under the substitute list. Again, if we can know the difference between the um, certified and non-certified. And then we have teacher aid subs, a whole host of other names, custodial subs, clerical subs, Nurse subs, bus driver. I thought we used a service for nurse subs. Um, they're very hard to get. We only have three of them. Yeah, that's why I thought we used a service, right? We tried. They don't always have people available. Bus driver subs. <clears throat> and then we have tutors and the safety committee members. Anthony Morrow, Scott Latham, Charles Shy, Patty DeGregorio, Terrence Rush, Ellen O'Neill, Lisa Simonetti, Stephen Flanagan, Ryan Case, Anthony Dragone, David Bear, Mike Carver, Alice Almaji, Chris Campos, Thomas Shade, Eric Keel, Patricia O'Day, Patricia Amato, and Chief Marty Cl Martin Flatley. Mike, can we that list as well? Good. Nurse subs, should we put something out that we could use more nurse subs? I think we're putting it probably in the paper. Okay. Time for all the different kinds of subs. Okay. Okay, good. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation, superintendent recommendations? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, board meeting date for 2021. I, did, I apologize. I didn't really look this over with the calendar, but um, July 29th. August 26th, September 23rd, October would be the 24th, uh, the 14th and the 20th, because I'm assuming the 14th would be a work session, November 18th, December 16th, January 6th, January 27th, February 24th, March 3rd, March 10th, March 24th, sounds like a lot, but those are budget meetings, the 24th would be the regular meeting, April 14th, and then the April 21st regular meeting and BOCES budget vote. Okay, I can't do Tuesdays. I wrote it on Tuesday, but that's okay. Somebody else. We've never had a board meeting on a Tuesday. Well, that's the. I don't know why we would change our meeting night to accommodate policies. That's all. Wait, wait. Maybe Wednesday is. I know that we have somebody working on the schedule. What? Well, we this year we didn't do it. Wait, which one are we talking about? April twentieth. Our normal meeting date would be April twenty-first on a Wednesday. Gotcha. Suggestion here is that we change our meeting date to Tuesday because that's the BOCES vote. Gotcha. I'm not in favor of that because I don't know why we would change our Wednesday meeting night to BOCES. We cannot do it. We just got to do it as many times and then David shared it before having Tuesday meetings. Well, for many years. Couple, couple 
people. That's what we did this year, isn't it? A people, so it's nice. I just remember coming on a Tuesday. That was yeah, right. In the morning for two, yeah. five, five, five minutes. seconds. Yeah, if you want to do it on the Wednesday the twenty first for a regular meeting. I would prefer we keep it to our regular day. I, I'm bothered that we can work things. Um, we really we have a lot of budget meetings, but we only only have two work sessions in this calendar. Well, I would I would assume that one of those budget ones, like March third, would be a budget slash work session. Yeah. Not that we and we may not need it, but I think we should have That's something the time in there that mm-hmm. either that or the tenth. The tenth would be the right one. Well, we have a work session we do with the, that quick budget. And we're talking about in March, though, too. Right. Well, yeah, and I'm not, you know, I just, we go from October through through March, uh, through through May. With, Quarterly, we should have one. For so, you know, so I'm just thinking if we could have one a little bit close, you know, even if it's. So let's do it on the 10th, then? Make that the budget March work 10th. session? Is that what you suggested? Yeah. And, and it might not be bad to have one in May and the one in June because if you know if we are fully operational right. by then May and June are really good times a year for us to have an extra you know have those extra work sessions because often it's you know when we can bring students in and find out you know kind of find out what's going on. on June 9th. Yeah. That's so there's one on May 5th and one on June 9th. So that would give us four throughout the year. One at the beginning of the year, That's one kind of in that. the middle and then two near the end. That work for you guys down there? Yeah, that's what we've generally done is support. Yeah, that's sometimes, sometimes they really are just times when you, you know we're asking you know can you bring something special in and it's a good time to do it because it's not at the end of a regular meeting and stuff like that. Um, so those are good times. Mm-hmm. I think. The, the one in our program is so. so just with those changes. Yeah. Right. I have no problem coming in on Tuesday. Yep. Tuesday, so three of us just have to show up. Well, I schedule is steady. Yeah, we'll have to do via Zoom. Can we do that via Zoom? I mean, I'm not sure because I I know we have executive order as far as Zoom meetings. So we don't know what next year is going to bring. <laughs> I hope we're almost done with this nonsense. I mean, we didn't vote this year, so I... I uh, issue an executive order? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to vote. I'll find out from BOCES, too. Okay. Other parts of the... Other BOCES are not going to I, I'm so opposed to the way that they did this. And and I've talked to the yeah, president of BOCES. Yeah, we're not allowed to vote any other day. I, I explained it all It's absurd. Said, why can't we just vote, you know... If they need the vote by that day, why can't we vote at the prior meeting? Exactly. And then and give them the vote on the prior okay. And I think if enough districts so are allowed to do that. I don't know. I'll reach out to them. I can tell you this. We never had a meeting on Tuesday unless we were Wednesday. And we voted on Wednesday. Yeah, that's right. So I'll find out. I know the panel has reached out to them and asked many times, and they'll probably tell me the same thing they told her. Right. Or we'll find out, can we can we pre-vote? Yeah. If we know all of the I'll find out. information, is it just that they need to have it that day? That's fine. But... You know. I'll, I'll find out what we can do. Patty, but you'll change the March 10th to be budget work session. Patty, the March 10th one will be a budget work session? Okay. Okay, is there a motion to approve those board meeting dates? Approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. And then we have some NJROTC trips. Leave it to Major to be right on this. <laughs> SUNY Maritime College, October 2020. <laughs> TBD. They're all TBDs, pretty much. U.S. Coast Guard Academy, October 31st. Bethel, Connecticut, November 21st. Linden, New Jersey, January 18th, 2021. North Rockland High School in New York, February 2021. Paltzman, New Jersey, 20, February 2021. And Perth Amboy, 2021. Is there a motion to accept those TBD dates for Roxy? Second. 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 Brian seconded. All in favor? Second. New business? Committee. We got to get together and have a meeting. Okay. If 
finance committee? No, we've got nothing going on. Building committee. I don't think we've had a meeting in quite some time, as a lot of committees have. Maybe uh, what I'll do is I'll, once uh, Dr. Moore gets a little more familiar with the landscape, that maybe he could contact, uh, it's Brian and I, and yeah. just let us know when might, he, he thinks it might be a good time to sort of sit down and hash things out. You know, obviously, Mr. Shy is very, you know, a lot of information on that. We don't have a whole lot going on, really. Just, I guess, the baseball field is, is that sort of a, That's still an open. ongoing saga, right? And, and then there's the usual. You know. I think that's the only open thing is that baseball field. I think the pergola, too. And, and the, um, the architect firm. I think you guys need to discuss. Yeah, when David and I met yesterday, we, uh, we spoke about it a little bit, and we're going to talk about it more tomorrow. He explained the uh, explained the fact that, that he believed that you guys were enamored with the architecture firm. Maybe you should go out with an RFP for uh, uh, We felt it was time to go out for an RFP. Um, we also met and discussed the world that's supposed to drop out here. The plans were in, and I haven't had a chance to meet with Chuck yet to talk about what you know, they were explaining to me about the finances we've done and got halted. That would be probably yeah. I mean, obviously, no, I'm, I'm not going here. None of us are really going anywhere this summer. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're around. And whenever you are comfortable, you have a better lay of the land, and we'll we'll sit down. And Great. Thank you. Yeah. Once I've uh, met with him and been able to read through everything, uh, then I'll be able to talk better about it. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, that building. There's no visitors, so we don't have to have that hearing. Board member commentary. Brian. Uh, welcome, Dr. Morrow. Um, as I don't want to steal John's thunder, but this is a special place. <laughs> Sorry, John. It's okay. Good for you, Brian. Uh, <laughs> you know, I gotta stop saying that because now I'm a one trip home. It's kind of getting a t-shirt. T-shirts made. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna make you a different. t-shirt, John, or a hat. Yeah, we'll get those t-shirts made by August. Uh, this is a special stuff. This is special. You're in a good spot. Uh, people have set you up for uh, you know a great situation. Uh, but like everything else, is always so I look forward to working with you, and making it happen. And, uh, hopefully, we can get through this insanity. Uh, same thing, welcome. Uh, glad you're here. And um, so we're all going to have a roller coaster of a ride together our first year. So yes. It should be fun. And I think that, you know, I, I think I speak for the rest of the board that, you know, we are open to hearing anything. We're, you know, we, we like to be involved, but we won't, you know, we don't like to be micromanaging. That's not our style. But, um, you know, we. We're there if you need to talk to us about anything. And all of us, any of us run things by us, you know, we're, we're there to help as much as to, you know, because then you get to be able to get where you need to get faster so then we don't have to help anymore. <laughs> Thank you. So, welcome. Scott? Um, I just wanted to comment on graduation, you know, it wasn't... He stole my... Obviously, it was, it, was, it was different, but I want to thank a lot of people put in a lot of work to make that happen. And I've heard nothing but positive feedback. And I just want to thank all those people uh, who really went out of their way to, to, to make it as special as it could be. Um, obviously, welcome Dr. Morrow. And um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. It looks like we're going to have about 37 in the kindergarten coming in, under 40. Um, you know, I, I spoke to, uh, to Ellen today, and she believes we'll hit exactly the right about the food. She thinks we made a So, um, you know, that could be the, you know, it could be a district of 500 in 10 years. So I, I just hope that we can have a great working relationships with the surrounding districts so we can continue to offer, you know, a diverse set of programs to our students. And I think we have someone who's very capable of doing that because you came from a big district and you had to work with lots of different
pull out if I get to follow up with John. I just I don't, I don't know if I speak for Scott, but that graduation was um, much more than we anticipated. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was a lot of uh, uncertainty about how it was going to go, and uh, I, as a parent, uh, was extremely pleased with how it turned out. I think, uh, in, in light of everything that was was going on, our kids got uh, probably the best one on the island. Talked to people up island and. They didn't get what we got, so it's a special place. <laughs> I'll tell you that I, I participated in three because I happened to have a child who graduated this year, um, and then I worked in another district where we still haven't had graduation, but we had what amounted to a drive through just in case we never will have one. And then here, and uh, you know, I, I believe all the credit goes to all of the people that were working that day. You know, Mr. Rush and really taking the, you know, the lead on it. It was very, very nice. I'm glad that I got an opportunity to come in and, uh, and witness it, and, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, and see because it spoke about your community. Because my child, uh, who went to a high school that touted themselves as award-winning, um, had three minutes walking across the stage with four people on it as we drove up and took pictures and then drove away. Um, and as much as I think it bothered us more than it bothered her, <laughs> you know. Um, it was disappointing. I don't want to complain about them because I think they all did the best they could. They had, they had uh, you know, they had a situation they had to deal with and they dealt with it the best they could. And they tried to make it as special as possible. They really did. So it's not a complaint, but it's a statement about the community that you all live in and, and that you all volunteer in because uh, most high school graduations are not like the one that was out here. So uh, I had a chance to come. Echo everyone's thought. Welcome, Dr. Moore. We look forward to working with you. Um, seeing what kind of stuff is on the horizon that's got your plate full, certain to start as you're starting into these conditions. I want to thank the board for their confidence in me electing me as board president. And I want to comment, like you guys said, about graduation and how wonderful it was. But I also think um, the end of the year was as good as it could be for the elementary did their drive through, the parade that they did. The senior parents, you guys, your senior parents were amazing what they did for the seniors and their senior walks the last few months. The things in the front of the school with the senior pictures, the um, thing that they had with the parade with them, and they got their, their goodie bags. And to one of our district employees that did the dusting for the seniors on graduation morning, I think it goes to, not to beat that dead horse if it's a special place. Um, it just was a really fine example the last few months of, um, I think, our school community and our town community and our whole community coming together for the students, especially the seniors. I have to be honest with you, I feel bad for these incoming seniors because next year could never top this year. Um, but thank you to the staff. The staff throughout the school year, um, especially in the last four months, really went up, has gone above and beyond doing, you know, what they had to do at last minute notice and it, it's very much appreciated and noticed by this Board of Education. So if you would just express our appreciation to the entire state. With that, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys.